All right, so it's October 20th, and I'm just wrapping up my season. We just did our last farmer's market today in Penticton. I don't even know what happened to 2018. It has by far been the busiest year of my life, and for this business, so much success, so much stuff we have done this year and accomplished. It doesn't even feel like a year has gone by. It really feels like years have gone by with what we've worked on this farm. But we're not even finished yet. I have so much stuff that we've worked out and we really have a clear direction where we're headed for at least the next two years. So in this video, I wanna go over all of that. But first, I wanna get into some really exciting news. I'm gonna be visiting at least five mushroom farms as we travel across Canada. I'm looking to hopefully reconnect with Joel from Stellar Mushrooms in Regina. I'm also looking to connect with Brad in Meaford, Ontario at Top Shelf Mushrooms. I have lots of videos with Brad already, but specifically he's working on this robot that is gonna revolutionize the mushroom industry. I'm gonna hopefully have his bagging machine on my farm here next year huge bottleneck in my business and I'm looking to save a lot of labor with his machine. So we'll go over where he's, where he is with that machine. I'm also be looking to visit three of my past students who have taken my mentorship program. I'm going to be visiting John in Sault Ste. Marie, but also Paul and Jerome in Quebec. So you guys are going to see all those videos. All that content is coming out in November. Really excited to share with you guys about that. Let's get into the video today. I'll bring you through my farm. I really want to talk about what we've been working on and where we're headed in 2019 and really the strategy of how I want to grow my business. First off guys, my name is Brian Callow and I am the co-owner and founder of What The Fungus. If you guys haven't followed my channel before, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell if you guys want to see more videos like this. Today I want to get into what we've been working on. First things first, we've been doing a lot of construction. We have all the tin up on our buildings. We've even started trimming and we've been finishing all the soffits and getting my guys to figure out how to do all that so a lot of learning on this farm I have two really young guys working for me so a lot of mistakes happen but that's really what it's all about so the farm's really just starting to come together now my investor King he got a sick deal we got a hundred sheets of this eight foot long tin for two thousand bucks can't even beat that this was reclaimed tin from an insurance claim so we've just covered our buildings with that we also worked on a new building we worked on lab three back here. Let me just bring you guys back here real quick. So that went up mid-season. And this lab, we're actually just laid out the foundation to start lab four. We have all the pyramid blocks in place here. You guys can see. So we got all the pyramid blocks in place. And this is just getting the foundation for this building set we are looking to get this building up by possibly the end of 2019 and it's just going to attach to this lab here it's really important we're looking to scale up pretty quick and this stuff takes time winter's winter's coming so we just have these pyramid blocks in place here and we're going to put these four by eights and some saddles probably by midwinter, and then we can build onto this when we have enough money and get this building up literally in four days with the roof on. So right now we're just thinking ahead. So this is another 40 feet extension to lab three that is scheduled to be completed by end of 2019 next year. And we're looking to scale up production pretty hard. This year was we were all about trying to figure stuff out. I'll get into our new sterilizer in just a minute. I haven't talked about it on this channel yet, but we didn't have near any of the contamination problems that we've had in the past, and I've made a lot of changes. But before I get into that, you guys might notice this greenhouse is stripped. We're actually gonna be redesigning this greenhouse. I've been talking about this for years. We're looking to build something a little bit more permanent and long-term. I have 
Dustin, who works for, for us, sometimes he works on our tractor. He has a mobile welding truck and I'm getting him over here and he's gonna be designing a door and a window in the back and we're gonna weld on a frame. We're actually gonna have a swinging door for this greenhouse and we're gonna get that design figured out probably in the next couple of weeks and then we're going to get some white poly channel lock wiggle wire and we're going to have a proper greenhouse and it's going to be so awesome i can't wait the problem with these greenhouses right now is the zippers always fail the 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 greenhouse covers is more like a tarp material and that always uh flakes off and rips with the wind so we're really looking to get something a little bit more sturdy and really this is just the beginning this is the design phase but if you guys don't know how these greenhouses work for us this is definitely a really good look here we have a nema 4x box up there that has a relay the humidistat will trigger the the relay and then we have a solenoid and our misting fan attached to that really simple design that's how it works we use these plastic shelves from home depot you can source these out anywhere and we can produce about eight to nine hundred pounds of mushrooms in here definitely probably more than that but we can do that about six to eight weeks so we're looking to scale that up and get up some more greenhouses but the only way we're going to be able to do that is we need to increase our sterilization so this is what we've been working on for the last year we have these steam tanks here and we can now do 400 bags in these three steam tanks in one steam run and we start we usually start the boilers around four o'clock in the afternoon and then about midnight i shut them off the following day so we're going uh whatever that is that's probably about 32 hours steam from start to finish and this, the key to these was, is we needed to fill in this gap right here. And this is just like a foam that you find in your, your windows or your doors. Get this at any hardware store. We needed to make a seal that we could then put a lid on these tanks. And we ended up using these moving blankets, which ended up being such a cool idea. So we're actually, we got these moving blankets at Princess Auto in Kelowna. That place is awesome i can get anything i need there so we fill this up with bags and then we just drape this moving blanket over the whole tank we actually do two layers so two moving blankets and we've made these lids out of polyisocyanate and we made these panels so everything gets insulated and then these lids go right over top of those moving blankets get ratcheted down with some string and because we've solved the leak problem these tanks don't actually lose that much steam and we're able to do 400 bags in one shot so we're looking to scale this up next year and do another three of these tanks and have six of these running on my farm and then still use the tanks we have here but slowly these tanks will only be used for spawn that's kind of what we're looking to do long term so once we have those tanks built we're going to be able to scale up and put up some more greenhouses but a big a big thing for our farm is that we can only start in February, March when the snow melts and we really need to get a jump start to our season. So we've been working on this overwintering process for almost two years now. And this whole greenhouse is overwintered. I'll bring you guys in there really quick. But basically what we found is that we can put blocks in our greenhouse and as long as we block out the sun, these blocks aren't gonna fruit. So we actually have these essentially dormant in here. You guys can see a bunch of blocks. It's pretty dark in there. So we have a bunch of blocks in here. We haven't sliced the bags. And these are gonna sit in here and dormant and we'll probably initiate them second week of March. And not only that, if uh, our blocks in greenhouse four and five, if they don't quite fruit enough, then we can tape up the holes. Same thing, put these trucker tarps over the shells, darken them up and get a second flush starting in the spring. So I'll bring you guys in these greenhouses. We have lots of stuff fruiting there right now and just kind of go over what's going on with all of those mushrooms. So we have a great first flush coming in here. We have pearl oyster. 
And we have some tree oyster just starting in the back there. More pearl oyster down there. So all of these will be ready to pick uh, probably in four to five days. It really depends on how cold it is. It's warmed up recently. And then we'll look to get a second flush by mid-November before we shut down. And if we don't, all of, the, all of these blocks will get overwintered for a second flush moving into April. And this greenhouse is pretty much the same stuff, but we do have some lion's mane in here. Again, everything's growing pretty slow, so we're starting to harvest once a day, if not every second day at this point, as temperatures drop. But these are the probably the best strains that grow in this environment is our tree, pearl oyster, and lion's mane. We also have some anoki up here, but I was a little late on those, so I'm not sure if those are going to fruit. We have king oyster in here. They do okay, but they don't really like cold temperatures, like extreme cold temperatures. So they're, they're growing very slow. King oysters I'm probably harvesting every two to three days at this point, and we're, we're lucky to get a couple pounds. So I'm just walking into the entrance of lab two. So we have a double flow hood workbench here which we have two students that can work there. But moving into 2019, we actually wanna work on a three flow hood workbench, and then we can have five people working in this lab and really just start hammering out production, but also just having a really good learning experience for all of our students. So we have two of these flow hoods built. My buddy uh, in Summerland, John Russo, he's gonna be building another one of these for us and I'm just trading mushrooms for him. Like how cool is that? So we're looking to set up another workbench here. Just don't quite have enough money for that. So that's a project that's gonna happen next year. And then we'll be able to basically do production here and then lab two just goes around this corner back there. And then this is like the main area. And then once uh, we have that set up, those new sterilization tanks, they're just going to tractor right in here and we'll set them inside and use a forklift and just put them wherever we want, take them right out of the bins and inoculate. So that's where we're headed in 2019 and all of that is awesome, but I'm going to have to find ways to sell all of these mushrooms. A lot of the stuff I'm working on is we're entering into some new markets. We're looking at really setting up shop in Whistler, British Columbia and in that area. I'm also going to be working with one of my students, Jose, he's looking at setting up a distribution company where he picks up produce in the Okanagan and then distributes it out to Vancouver. We're looking to possibly start working with Farmbound, probably Locomotive, start working with CSA companies and really just start working on all the angles to get lots of distribution as my farm scales up. We're starting to hit that market cap. We're at about 45 restaurants right now. I think I can probably pick up another 10 or so next year. And then we have to start looking at other ways to kind of keep getting bigger. It's all about growing and kind of getting out of that comfort zone and seeing what you're made of. That's what we do here on my farm here. If you guys want to learn exactly what I'm doing, we have a early bird discount for our mentorship program going on right now till the end of December. Check that out on our website, wtfmushrooms.com. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video.